it preparing takes, to live stream. Yeah, it takes like a good 30 seconds for it to load up. Now it's going to show you the Facebook page, which is disconcerting. So now go back to your Zoom. Okay, you're now open to the public and live on Facebook. Thank and you. Have a lovely evening. Thanks, Pam. You too, Pam. Bye. Mark is coming. Mark's coming. Okay, good. Um, I guess I start the meeting. Um, yep. Okay. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is the call to order for the meeting. Um, according to the Open Public Meetings Act notice, this meeting is being held in accordance with the public laws of 1975, Chapter 231, and adequate notice of this meeting has, provi has been provided by a notice sent to the Asbury Park Press, Two River Times, and Star Ledger, and posted in the main lobby of the municipal building and on the municipal website. Thank you. Um, at this time, I guess we have to do the Pledge of Allegiance? Correct. All right, um, Pam usually throws up a flag, but I guess we'll just stand stand, stand where the flag is. Right. So if you have a flag in your house, you could probably stand oh. and look at it. I have a flag. <laughs> right? I have a flag, but okay. I pledge um, allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic for which it stands. stands. One nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you. Okay, Bonnie, may you do the roll call, please? Commissioner Facey Blackwood. Present. Commissioner Taylor. Commissioner DuPont. Yes. Commissioner Forrest. You're muted. Ben, ben you got to mute. Mr. Forrest is muted. Present. Commissioner Hudson. Here. Okay. Um, the next item on our agenda is the approval of minutes, but they have not been distributed at, as yet. So I would I'll like table, to I'll table, table them. Yes. I'll table that. A motion. Second. Motion to table. <laughs> Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Bye. Any opposed? No? Okay. Motion passes. Uh, the next resolution we have is 2205. And uh, that's a resolution confirming the place and time of the Red Bank Charter Study meetings for 2022. As agreed, we're going to be meeting on the first Wednesday and the third Tuesdays. And uh, for the time being at Zoom at 6.30 p.m. Is there a motion I'll to make, approve? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, sorry, I have a different copy here. And um, so at this time, we'll just move to the uh, reports and presentations. We have to table the bylaws resolution. Okay. Yeah, just okay. on that, um, I know that uh, the vice chair um, was working on those and I'm waiting to exchange copies. So we just need a little more time to uh, resolve the bylaws. So um, a motion would be in order to table them so we can uh, bring that back at a future meeting. I'll make okay. that motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Sorry, I'm bringing up a different schedule. My agenda looks a little bit different. And so I just want to make sure I have the right thing. Okay, so we have reports and presentations. At this time, does the Finance Committee have anything to report? The chairperson, Kate, Kate Okerson, does not. We okay. have nothing to report. At this I time. nominated Kate and she accepted the chair. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently you have. <laughs> okay, sounds great. And so that's fine. Uh, moving on, we're here to welcome Mr. Joe Hartnett from Government Strategies Group. Uh, with his presentation on the Management Enhancement Study Report that was done by, uh, by he and his office in 2018. So, Joe, the show's yours. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me and I'm happy to uh, be of any 
assistance that I can in, in getting you guys uh, started and what's uh, a very important uh, uh, undertaking, one of the most important undertakings that uh, any municipality uh, engages in. Uh, as you know from our report, I uh, hope you've all had a chance to review it, at least the pertinent sections regarding uh, the form of government and Red Bank and uh, some of the issues uh, involved with the operations of your municipal government under its present form. Uh, in general, there's, there's two things that I would uh, try to advise you. Uh, some of, uh, well, Mark, some of them uh, are mentioned in the report and some are not. Uh, some of the things that I would mention to you. Uh, first of all, you know, we would recommend you approach your work with the understanding that there's no such thing as a perfect form of government. Uh, that if you choose one form over another, it's going to uh, guarantee to uh, result, uh, achieve the results that you want to achieve. You always have to remember that, of course, any organization, human organization, is an organization of people. So the people in that organization are going to uh, affect uh, how effective the organization is. Uh, so the goal, the objective really in trying to decide on a form of government is choosing a form of government that maximizes your chances to achieve the results that you want to achieve. Uh, are others experiencing a connection issue with uh, Mr. Hartnett? Yes. Yeah, no, my internet connection went out for a minute. Is it back? Now it is, yes. Okay. Uh, so I, I, the last thing I was saying was that, uh, you know, the mindset I believe to recommend to you all going into this is uh, not that you're going to pick a perfect form of government, but that your objective is to uh, maximize your chances to recommend a form of government uh, that you think has the best chance to achieve the results that you want to achieve. Uh, again, any organization that consists of people is subject uh, to the influence uh, of people. Uh, the, one of the things that also that I would recommend to you is uh, that much of what you're going to be doing, you're not reinventing the wheel. So, uh, I would encourage you to obtain copies uh, of other uh, reports that were issued by other municipal charter study commissions in other communities. Uh, you know, they, they range in uh, the depth and breadth of uh, the types of reports that people have done, but there's some very good reports out there that would help inform uh, what you are trying to accomplish. Mr. Hartnett, uh, this is Michael DuPont. I don't mean to interrupt, but um, what would you uh, recommend in terms of other municipalities that have completed the charter study to read from? What, what towns are you referring to? Well, I think it can uh, contact the Division of Local Government, and they could advise you on the towns that have done it most recently. Some of the ones I'm familiar with uh, date back quite a ways. I know certainly Montclair, where I was the uh, township manager, uh, they had a, a very, very thorough uh, uh, charter study done by uh, a, a commission just like yourselves. And they, they did an excellent job. I know I've read that report and I'm familiar with it. I haven't read it in a few years, but. Well, it's, uh, a, it's, a, it's, it's a great town. I know it very well because my daughter lives in it. So. Um, if you were part of that town, I know they're very successful. They, they have high taxes, I might point out, though. Oh, yes, they do. Among the highest anywhere. So, uh, uh, Ms. Hartnett, second, yeah, just, I, I'm so, go ahead. Right, I'll, come, I'll come back after. Go ahead. That's okay. Uh, the second thing I was going to recommend that you keep in mind is uh, a big part of this is, as I just said, firstly, uh, 
trying to pick a, a, recommend a form of government that maximizes your chances for success. But secondly, also one that uh, reflects uh, to some extent the culture of your community and can earn the has the best chance of earning the respect and trust of your citizens and uh, all your different stakeholders and, and so on and so forth uh, involved in the community. Uh, you know, municipal government, uh, you're in the confidence business, so to speak. And uh, if you don't have the trust and confidence of the public, it's very difficult to get anything accomplished. So a uh, form of government can help influence that as well. Uh, I'm, again, I'm not sure if all of you read our report, but just some general background on forms of government. Uh, you know, we alluded in, in our report to a little bit of the history of the form of government. Uh, I hope I don't bore you, but real quick, uh, you, some of you may have read about it, uh, what's called the Great Storm of 1906, which was the uh, hurricane in Galveston, Texas, which still remains the uh, most, most deadly hurricane in the history of our country. Uh, it, it totally devastated that community. Uh, just was an incredible, incredible storm. Uh, one of, unfortunately, one of the most graphic memories I have of, of remembering studying that storm a little bit was uh, in those days with the slate roof tiles that they were whipping through the town so much that they were actually beheading people. That's how bad it was. And that uh, ships were grounded uh, 10 miles inland. So it was an incredible storm. And the reason I mention it is after that storm, the governor of the state uh, picked uh, a group of experts in different fields uh, you know, a financial expert, for example, a, a manager of a large construction company, and he appointed a commission to uh, help Galveston recover. And it worked very well, and they did a great job. And after that, it spread like wildfire around the country, around the United States, that municipalities uh, tried to follow that model and create commission forms of government. A commission a commission form of government is one in which each elected official actually becomes the actual head of a department. So you would have a police commissioner, a public works commissioner, a health commissioner, a finance commissioner, and those elected officials run those departments. Uh, but almost as quickly as it uh, spread like wildfire throughout the country with hundreds and hundreds of municipalities adopting it, it quick, pretty quickly fell out of favor because uh, as is recognized in the business world, and we mentioned in our report, in the business world, they call that management by silo. And there's no one central anything. And eventually it leads to, uh, uh, in almost all cases, to uh, inefficiency and, and dysfunction. Again, there could be exceptions, as we talked before, since any organization is, is an organization of people, you get really good people and put them in almost any form of government, chances are you're gonna get a good result. So, uh, Mr. So Hart, Mr. Hart, yes. if I could interrupt you. Uh, you, you make reference to the silo in your, in your historical data, but you make reference to it in your report. And um, is our, does our former government um, uh, allow the silo management that you refer to, or did we, as, as I think your report says, drift away from the intent of the original charter? And if we went back to the original charter, in your opinion, would that make a difference? Well, yeah, I was just heading to that. So I'll back into it a little bit. Uh, where we've eventually wound up with the, the main major forms of government in New Jersey. And I, uh, I don't know if I'm happy to say, but I will say I've worked in every one of those forms. Uh, the government form of government, township committee, uh, mayor council and council manager. Now directly to your point, that's exactly where I was heading. With respect to the borough form of government, all, by the way, 
uh, sometimes I forget to mention this because it, um, you know, it's so basic in what I do. One thing everybody needs to realize is that municipal governments are 100% creatures of state government. Not 98%, not 99%, 100%. Every single thing that a municipal government does uh, it was established by the state and was permitted by the state by state statute. So, so getting back to my point, the, uh, the state statutes that govern, and Michael, of course, can uh, interrupt me if I say anything wrong or, or validate it, but basically uh, the way to say it is the borough form of government, the statutes that establish it are so broad that you can cover the entire range of how a town is managed, how a municipality is managed under the borough form of government. And by that, I mean, at the one extreme, the borough form of government, uh, the elected officials can function as commissioners and eat, they can decide by ordinance that each of the elected officials will be in, actually in charge of a department. And then all the way to the other extreme, under the borough form of government, uh, the elected officials can, again by ordinance, if they do it by ordinance, they can uh, make the borough administrator the chief executive officer and uh, you know, imbue that person with the authority to run the town as CEO. So the, the, by statute, uh, the borough form of government does not determine where within those parameters a local town chooses to be, and they choose to do that by ordinance. So that's why in our report, uh, we recommended uh, as an interim measure that the uh, that Red Bank uh, adopt an ordinance uh, empowering the administrator with more authority than the current ordinance empowers them. So, uh, and I, I don't know, frankly, uh, uh, Michael, uh, going back in the history of Red Bank, I don't know how many times the ordinance might have been, uh, you know, amended or changed or whatever, but where you are now is uh, the council did not fully take our recommendation to broaden the authority of the business administrator. So they haven't really directly addressed the issue, but uh, they have also, you could say, directly addressed the issue by virtue of your existence, that uh, you know, you're know you here now uh, empowered to come up with a report to recommend uh, what the uh, municipality should do. But the silo management still continues, correct? Well, I'm not there now, but I, and I hope I have all of your permission to speak very candidly. You do. But, uh, you do. You know, I'm not there now, uh, but part of our assignment when we were there, actually, it was a, a separate assignment. Uh, I actually served as the administrator for, I think it was about six months. Uh, at, at part of our assignment was to do that and to help you find a new administrator which we did, and that was uh, Mr. Shahadi. And, uh, you know, quite candidly, uh, I think the reason that he left you is because of micromanaging, interference, et cetera, on the part of certain elected officials. And I, you know, I'm not so here we to don't, point we don't, Yeah, I don't think we need to name names. I just think that- uh, No, I'm, I was just gonna say, that's not something I do, so. No, I'm but I, I name I names. Think, I'm not here to point fingers or blame anybody. I just speak in general terms. No, and we're and we're just trying to. So none of us, and I think on this uh, committee, have, are have been in uh, the borough uh, office as managers or elected officials recently, and uh, so it's important because you, I, I noticed your report stated May 2018. So and I didn't, you know, I knew that you had uh, uh, helped. Uh, name a borough administrator, but it's good to know that you come from experience as a manager, as a borough administrator. So 
Sure. That's that's helpful, I think, to every one of us, and anyone could sure. join in. But I think that was that's good to know. And like I said, yes, I, I've worked in all all of the four uh, major forms of government. So, but all but also in Red I, Bank. as Mark might be able to tell you, when I was there as in Red Bank as the administrator, I had the luxury. Everybody knew I wasn't there to be the permanent administrator, so uh, I could push back a little more than maybe somebody. Not to mention, you know. Little gray hair. Uh, some people think it gives you a little authority. I don't know, but no, it's called it's called wisdom, Mr. Hartnett. <laughs> right. Hey, um, you know ben, what? I, a question. Ben have a question? Yeah. Sorry, I, I, we've got COVID in the house, so I have to be careful. Fortunately, I, I don't have it personally, but um, so um, I was gonna, you know, I know it's a silo business also, and there's been debate in our town about about it you know with one hand we had the more commission where like you know there's a commissioner of the of the police and there's a commissioner of public works i guess um and then we moved away from having council people kind of run departments and now um there seems to be some people who want to kind of go back to that so i guess my under i want to understand why i mean of course the buzzwords a silo why specifically because you have hands-on experiences is it a bad idea to have, I don't know, six council members or seven, depending on the town, you know, like one in charge of uh, public works, one in charge of the of, of, of the fire department, the police department. And I mean, just kind of, you know, I'm a civilian, I haven't run a, any towns. Why is that a bad idea in a, in a nutshell? Well, uh, there'll be several reasons for that. Let's to start with the first one. Let's go back to the great storm of Galveston and when the governor appointed the so called, let's call it the first commission ever in terms of running a municipality. Uh, what did the governor do? The governor turned to people with great experience and knowledge in the areas that he appointed them. You know, appointed a very experienced construction manager and put uh, him or her in charge of public works. Same thing on finance, same thing in the other areas. Uh, health. Think of uh, you know health commissioner and so on and so forth. Uh, under a, the system that we work over, you know, people are democratically elected and not necessarily with any credentials whatsoever in the area that they're being asked to run. Uh, that's why in New Jersey, boy, I'm going to say out of 565 municipalities. Less than five are left that are commissioned. So uh, that's one thing. And secondly, uh, even though commissioners are in charge of the department, you still have the question of maximizing your chances, you know, of getting the most qualified people in that particular area of expertise. And again, if you have six or seven really good people, uh, what are they going to do? Uh, any of you who might have been involved in management, you're going to defer to the professional to run that department and maybe just kind of oversee it. Just like uh, to use a sports analogy, you know, the, the usually <laughs> the owners of a football team or a baseball team don't manage the team on the field. You know, they hire somebody who knows what they're doing. Uh, however, as a uh, lifelong Yankee fan, you might be able to say that George Steinbrenner didn't behave that way, but in any case. Uh, and, and again, there's no central division uh, decision-making process. So you have competition among the commissioners. Uh, there's just many ways that it can uh, you know, go haywire, uh, question of undermining the authority of the professionals, uh, six different individuals or seven different individuals, uh, running six or seven different departments could have six or seven different, totally different cultures instead of having, you know, centralized policies, human resources and so on and so forth. So it's just, uh, opens it up to difficulty. So following up on that, one of the, some people have said, 
you know, to me is that, well, one advantage of having the more commissioning type of government where one person is in charge of, you know, one department is that there's more accountability. There's, uh, you know, like if I'm running, say I was, you know, head of uh, public works and somebody could call me at home and say, oh, you know, my pothole, I got a leak. Can I take care of it? You know, um, is that, so what is the argument that, you know, for, you know, having a, I mean, you said part of it, the expertise, but I mean, the argument I've heard against this from people in town, some people, is that, um, sure. well, having uh, six council members who are meddling or running, however you want to put it, the department gives greater accountability to the uh, people because the elected officials can press the buttons and get done what they want to get done directly. And what if that's in conflict? You know, the town has one set of resources, the tax dollars and whatever revenue they bring in. So what's the decision-making process for allocating that? Uh, and it still doesn't, uh, when you say accountability, with accountability, there's also responsibility. So if I'm the police chief or the head of public works and there's a commissioner above me, that commissioner has the responsibility, not me. So if that's if the commissioner's in charge of the department, so you've now diffused uh, the chain of command, so to speak. How do the commissioners yeah, how do the commissioners resolve a disagreement? Thank you. So uh, Mr. Hartnett, I, I want to uh, ask a couple of questions. I'm trying to organize this in my brain here. Um, going back to your point that, you know, fundamentally government's this organization of people, right? And people are fallible. Right. There's no, there's no perfection here. Um, and, and looking at the recommendations to, you know, right now to, you know, look at other towns who've done the same thing. Um, one thing that comes up in the report regularly is notions of both efficacy and uh, effectiveness, right? At, at, like they're words that are used regularly, but how are we to know, like what is the instrument the, that we can figure out from an apples to apples basis, not apples to oranges, that says any one thing is forming, is, is um, you know, functioning with efficacy. You know, if we're talking about this notion of the silo, and you know, there's challenge, power structure challenges, there's conflicts or whatever, that becomes inefficient. But how is that measured, right? Because we're, we are citizens, right? We are, sure. we are and we are trying to um, use this sort of civic vehicle to, to you know, develop an understanding of what efficacy means to a bunch of people in our town who we're going to measure that differently. And, and so, you know, yeah. That's the huge, it's a, one of the biggest challenges here is figuring out how do we get the, you know, it's not just an open, one open-ended question, of course, right? Right. And, and that raises another good point, so I'm glad you asked it. But uh, uh, basically, two, to answer your immediate question, basically two things. First would be, and it's something we recommend that every town do, and uh, we recommended it to Red Bank also. I don't believe they followed through on it. But one is that a municipality develop a detailed strategic plan, at least a five-year strategic plan that covers every aspect of a municipal government and establishes clear goals and objectives. And when done correctly, that strategic plan right to your point, uh, becomes a thermometer on the wall that you can judge the progress you're making to, uh, to that. And that goes back to uh, Ben's point also uh, that I should have mentioned before. There are many overlapping functions between departments. Departments aren't necessarily an island unto themselves. And the success of all departments often depends on what another department is doing. So if you don't have a central authority to make sure that everybody's pulling their share of the load, so to speak, uh, rather than having independent silos, uh, it can really hinder your ability to achieve your goals and objectives. 
So that's that's one way that we always recommend. And secondly, is uh, metrics. You know, the, again, as I said before, you're not reinventing the wheel. So staying on top of uh, your metrics uh, for comparable communities, gathering as much data as you can. You know, there's all kinds of measuring sticks uh, uh, that can be used to measure the effectiveness of police departments, you know, calls for service and so on and so forth and public works, you know, uh, park acreage to be maintained, road miles to be maintained and uh, so on and so forth. So if you establish uh, those two things, uh, the uh, strategic plan it is more a high level uh, way of measuring how much progress you're making towards success. And if it's specific, it's very effective. Uh, I know that's something that we were very high on in, in Montclair and had a very detailed uh, five year strategic plan, which you know set forth, you know, in two years, we're going to build one parking deck. In three years, we're going to have another parking deck. Within a year and a half, we're going to establish an arts council. Within three years, we're going to have uh, set up uh, an arts program for youth, whatever. You lay out all of those things in a strategic plan, and now you have your thermometer to measure your success. And also, your municipal administrator now has a guide of going back to Ben's point of you know, what the goals and objectives as established by the elected officials are for the community. And now that administrator knows these are the things I have to get done and you have the clear chain of command. I, you know, I need the health department to do this with the police department and I need public works to do this with the finance department to change their reporting methods of uh, how much money was spent on projects. So. You know, you got to pull, like I said before, departments are not silos. You know, they're interrelated in many ways in municipal government. So when, you did the, when, you, when you did this report, Mr. Hartnett, in 2018, did Red Bank have a strategic plan? Not to my knowledge, no. Do you know if they have one now? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. Can I don't. you have a question? You know, Michael? No, I don't. I don't know that. Oh, okay. Uh, ben, go ahead. Your hand was up. Um, again, a little bit on the commission silo thing. So with it, you were talking about boroughs having broad authorization to do a lot. And so I take it that with the current form of government, that depending on who's elected and who's calling the shots, I guess, we could kind of go back and forth between, you know, the kind of commissioner form of government, which is what we had more. And then you know, if the, if the council passes an ordinance that says, well, we're going to give authority to the, the uh, you know, chief executive or the business administrator to run things more professionally, um, that can go back and forth. There's nothing inherent in a borough form of government that could say, uh, no, this can't happen. I mean, other than hopefully we elect people that will manage Red Bank responsibly, but it could just, under the borough form of government, this could be a chronic thing going back and forth. It doesn't necessarily stop it. Is that correct? That's an excellent point. Yes, because it's determined by ordinance. The statute gives the authority to a municipality by ordinance to, as I said, operate under either one of those extremes or choose something in the middle. Uh, there would be reasonable to say this is a weakness of this current form. You said, is every there's no perfect form coming, but a, a form a weakness in the borough form is this. Mm -hmm. It's very easy for the uh, elected officials to change it from time to time. Just like you said, you could have one group of elected officials want things this way and another group gets elected and they would change it and back and forth, just, just as you said. Oh, thank you very much. To Hartnett, I just have one question because in page four, and I'll quote this, Red Bank's former government has drifted away from the intent of the original charter and over the years has morphed into a commission form of government which gives individuals elected larger roles in the actual day-to-day -day business. And in that same page, you kind of describe the deficiencies of the commission form of government, i.e. the silos. So 
it would appear to me that based on your report, this truly is not, the commission form of government is not one of the better forms of government that we should be considering. Would that be correct? That would certainly be my recommendation, as I uh, said. I know, I know it's my, it would be my recommendation, but you're the expert. And not, and not just my recommendation, not just your recommendation, but the fact that, <clears throat> as I said before, if you know the history, that so many towns have turned away from it. Right, and, uh, and, that, and that's it, a clear- It can't clear, all be wrong. <laughs> right, it's a clear indication that there's something wrong with it. Exactly, right. But, you, but in that statement, you indicated that it morphed into a commission form of government. And that was that because of mismanagement or because of lack of ordinances to, to bring the reins back as to the charter? Where did the, the mayor and council well, fail? I think it goes uh, more to what Ben was saying, you know, again, and what I opened up with uh, depends on the people that are in office at the time. You know. Under would, the borough form of government, you could have, without making any changes to the ordinance, you could have a group of elected officials who just sat down and agreed among themselves, look, this is how we're going to conduct ourselves. None of us are going to get involved in telling department heads what to do or contacting employees directly. We're going to go through the, borough the administrator. Yeah, that's what okay. the administrator's for. Any concerns or problems we have, we'll direct them to the administrator. Or you could have a, a group of elected officials get in and think just the opposite. You know, you take care of public works, you take care of police, you take care of finance and, uh, you know, Tell them what to do. <laughs> okay, thank so, you. At, 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 no matter what, Red Bank needs to clearly spell out in writing what everybody's roles are and what the chain of command is. I mean, I don't know where you all work and it really doesn't matter that much, but can you imagine working somewhere you don't know who your boss is? Right. And do I report to the person in this office or can this person come in one day a week and tell me what to do? And so you want an answer, who do I report to? And there's nothing, nobody's given you an answer. And there's nothing written anywhere to tell you what the chain of command is. That would be a terrible environment to work in. I hope you all agree, whether it was in municipal government or in a private business or anywhere else. And if you had an ordinance in the current form of government that we possess that sets forth what you're just saying, would you believe that Red Bank would be better run? Absolutely, sure. And That's what why are we the recommended? What are the penalties? And, the, and I don't know this answer, and maybe Mr. Collins does. But what are the penalties associated when a, a an elected official kind of steps onto the turf of a borough administrator? Well, that would depend on the form of government, also. But the one I'm most familiar with. Uh, Unfortunately, perhaps, but uh, in the council manager form of government uh, under the Faulkner Act, I, I don't know if you've heard that term much, but if not, Michael or I can explain it to you. But uh, the council manager form of government, which most people and is consider and are designed to be the most businesslike form of government, uh, meaning the elected officials hire a CEO and the CEO basically runs the town under, you know, policies set by the board, as with a business, you know, General Motors, Disney, whatever, you know, the board hires the CEO, and when they don't like the job he or she is doing, they fire the CEO, just like Disney fired Michael Eisner. Uh, but I'm not, under the council manager form of government, I'm aware of it, obviously, because I worked in it for years, the, the state law actually provides that if an elected official uh, tries to direct an employee what to do or interferes with an employee, they can be removed from office. But that's the only form of government that I'm aware of that has that clause. Michael well, I guess, might know more yeah, than I guess, I, yeah, I, I guess the that... borough the borough form of government you would be able to censor that that elected official. Would that be not accurate? That, I mean, that's certainly the case, Commissioner. And, and you know, if there were any violations of the local government ethics law, 
uh, that certainly would be actionable, but um, there's certainly a distinction between an ethics violation and someone overstepping the bounds, especially when the lines are gray, like, you know, the situation Joe's referencing, where in the absence of, you know, a clear delineation, you know, it's kind of easy for, it's easier for um, elected officials to, you know, stray from, you know, what would normally be expected just based upon the lack of guidance. And I don't think there's anything in our current um, ordinances that would clearly outline any consequences at this time. Right. I don't and, think and they can. Exactly. I mean, the council, you know, doesn't really have any, the governing body doesn't really have any power to, to punish or, or, or remove any of its members unless it's contained in state law, like Joe is referencing. And, right. you know, yeah, exactly. and that was the first reference that was made to the Faulkner Act. And, you know, we could certainly speak to it tonight or, I would expect at a future meeting, and especially with uh, the speaker we have lined up for the next meeting to go over the different forms of government, but obviously the Charter Study Commission is established under the Faulkner Act, and so the, you know, the principal consideration that the commission will have is whether to consider one of those alternative forms of government that the Faulkner Act provides, and the, you know, the Faulkner Act has a lot more specificity in it. Uh, regarding those forms of government and, and, and the do different roles of the governing body members and the mayor as compared to the, the borough form that you currently have. By the way, just an interesting footnote, uh, the Faulkner Act is named after a uh, former mayor of Montclair, Mayor Faulkner. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else I can uh, address or help you with? Yeah, I'll, I'll put you on the spot, if you don't mind. Although we haven't investigated it, in all your years of experience, and it sounds like you have many years of experience on all the forms of government, you have any one particular one that you believe would uh, suit all of Red Bank's needs that we should, we should carefully look into? Well, uh, yeah, I have my biases like most uh, people. I, who are I, would, I, would, I would love to hear a, a wise, <laughs> biased opinion. You know, anybody who's a professional manager and wants to get things done and maximize the chances of getting things done is going to say that the uh, council manager form is the uh, best form of government for getting things done. Uh, but that can go awry also, you know, again, speaking candidly, when I was in Montclair, uh, I worked for uh, three different groups of mayor and council, and the first two were terrific, outstanding, you know, their attitude was, uh, Joe, you're the CEO, we hired you, uh, if you're successful, we're successful, so we want to support you and help you be successful. And uh, they never interfered with uh, any personnel matters, never tried to influence me to hire somebody's niece or nephew, nothing. Uh, and we got an awful lot done, including doing the strategic plan and accomplishing uh, every, almost everything under that strategic plan. Unfortunately, one of the flaws in Montclair's government was that uh, uh, all of their elected officials ran at the same time. Their elections weren't staggered. So that created uh, the possibility of a dangerous situation where you got all new people uh, uh, with no experience or whatever. Uh, and that's exactly what happened to me in my last term there. Uh, you had uh, uh, all new people get elected and six of them were from two different slates that couldn't have been more different and basically pretty much hated each other. So uh, the dynamics changed. And another mistake they made uh, was they changed the, the mayor under that form of government can be chosen from among the council. So the mayor is, you know, one of seven, uh, as they always used to say, and, and they would rotate the mayorship. Uh, and the mayor would serve kind of like a council president, run the meetings and, and had some other duties as well. And they decided to change it to an elected mayor. 
so uh, that that has you know some some issues with it too under that form of government because that you know that sets up the possibility of a clash between an elected mayor and the and the uh, township or municipal manager. But in any case, again, getting back to the theory, what you're talking about is maximizing your chances. Uh, you know, any professional manager would feel that that's the uh, best way to get things done. Secondly, uh, you know, again, I've worked under all the forms of government, strong mayor form of government, where you have, where the mayor is a strong CEO. You notice the common theme here is to have a CEO. <laughs> you know? I get, uh, I get, if I could. Under if I could the borrow form of government, you don't have one. Go ahead. Yeah, if I could draw your attention, and you made a good uh, point, and in your, re in your report, you make reference to uh, the, here in Red Bank, we have elections every year. And do you believe that that is a, a shortfall for the representation of um, the citizens here in Red Bank? And, and ironically, I don't know if you know, but Mark beat me in the in my last election by at least three or four votes. So okay. Landslide DuPont wants to know uh, whether yeah. whether whether having an election every year is a bad thing or is it a good thing? Uh, well, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, it's a little early in your work, but certainly one of the things that I'm sure Michael can give you guidance on this also that you're going to want to look at is how you structure your elected seats. I mean, uh, if I recall correctly, for example, Red Bank doesn't have wards. Everybody's at large. Yeah, that may be something you want to look at. Maybe you want to have a seven member council with some wards and some at large and staggered elections. Getting to your point, look, one of the most important things in municipal government for getting things done is continuity. And, you know, having elections every year, uh, at least on paper, is the antithesis of continuity. Uh, so I certainly couldn't uh, agree with that. I remember my first stint as uh, an administrator was under a strong mayor form of government. And uh, I was actually the youngest administrator ever in the country. That's that's what happened to this hair. I was 26 when I was appointed. And, you know, when I finally left uh, 16 years later, we had gotten an awful <laughs> lot done, an awful lot done. And I remember a newspaper reporting reporter asking me, interviewing me as an exit interview, to what do you attribute all your success, all of these things you got done? And I said, you know, it wasn't because we're smarter or better than other people. It's because we had the continuity and time to get things done. Because uh, we, I worked in an administration that was there for 20 years. I mean, we built new city hall, new police headquarters, new senior housing, assisted living, all kinds of flood control projects, parking. Decks. We got just in terms of bricks and mortar, we got so much done. But to give you an example, we built the uh, first uh, solar powered municipal complex in the United States. The ordinance to provide the money to do it was passed in 1979. Now I'm really showing my age. And the shovel didn't go in the ground until 1984 because uh, uh, some people sued to try to stop the project and so on and so forth. Now, if other people had gotten elected who were against building that municipal complex, it would have never happened. You know? But if I can point out something that's maybe, maybe tangential or anything, but under the McKenna administration, uh, they, were, they had continuity, but it was through elections. Many of the council people were continually elected. The mayor was elected. So they had sure. continuity and they built a new borough hall. They built Count Basie. The Kent administration built Riverside Park. They, they did a lot. Um, so I guess uh, what I'm saying to you is elections, if they win, if the, if the party uh, <clears throat> is doing a lot, there is continuity, but it's always contingent upon the elected well, uh, and you just made my uh you know my most important one of the most important points i opened with is that 
uh, no system is perfect, you know. Right. So what you're trying to do is choose the system that maximizes your chances for success. So if you had as a goal, forgetting whatever happened or anybody personally, uh, just as a paper uh, project or question, if your goal was to have continuity in an organization, uh, do you think having elections every year or having staggered elections with longer terms <laughs> gives you a better chance to achieve continuity? I mean, well, I, guess, I, guess, I guess the downside on that is that you give the voters a choice every year so you ask for, um, I guess, accountability, right? Every year, the voters are gonna say, all right, hey, listen, you did it a year, you promised you do X, Y, and Z. And the voters then could say, well, hey, listen, you know, we agreed with you, but now we don't agree with you. So hmm. there is, uh, and I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, is the objective of, our, of, a, of, a, of a study of this nature also to allow voices to be heard, right? Um, or is it just for the betterment of Red Bank? Well, no matter what you do, you, at, as I said in the beginning, having the trust and confidence of the public is number one. But if your so, elections again, are stacked- it's just a question. If you, if you think having elections every year uh, gives you the best chance of that, uh, I, I can't agree with that. You know, when I I'm worked not, in, I'm Cran not saying when that, I worked I'm in not... Cranford, Cranford for for a, in eleven years they had ten different mayors, and the biggest complaint that I had from department heads when I went there was we can't do our jobs because each year the township committee is changing, and. You know, I remember the recreation director said we had all of these plans done to uh, develop a community pool and some other facility at such and such a location. And then we got a different mayor and one or two different committee people and they squelched those plans and now they want to do something else. And this is constantly happening. So, again, <clears throat> I, I guess I sound like a broken record. You're not striving for perfection. You're, you're trying to do the best you can, come up with what maximizes your chances. And if you recall, I said in the beginning, you wanna reflect the culture of the community. Now it's a little tougher nowadays with social media and so on, and how uh, influenced uh, different elected officials might be by social media. Uh, it's definitely had a profound effect on municipal government. It's had a profound effect on people being willing to serve. Uh, it's something I really worry about for the future. Uh, I don't see a lot of young people wanting to go into business of being a business administrator, a municipal administrator, or, but I, I see countless citizens on social media who uh, think they can run your police department better than you can run it or your health well, department I, or whatever. I think, one, I think one of the reasons why this commission uh, was elected two to one was because people felt the voices were not heard. Um, so I guess what I'm asking is, are voices only heard at the election booth or do forms of government also uh, grant a greater um, hearing <clears throat> by elected officials uh, um, in different forms of government. I guess that's what I'm, we're trying to make sure voices are heard. Mm. And the transparency yeah. is important. I think that's the, probably the complaint that people are, are saying is that, hey, look, our voices are not heard, it's not transparent. And with all these mediums to hear, you know, I mean, think about it. When I first got elected, I didn't, I didn't put any, any meeting on Zoom or, on Facebook, I mean, maybe Mark did, but I wasn't technologically savvy. Um, but now things have changed. And so I think one of the things that people are saying, look, we want our voices heard. And the only way that they seem to be now is at the election booth and, and they're not being heard or they're not given uh, uh, attentiveness prior to uh, the election. 
Well, you're always going to have tension between two things. And it's again, it's only exacerbated nowadays by social media. Uh, I would argue that the thing that most engenders uh, people feeling their voices are heard, if you want to put it that way, is results. If, if you have a municipal government that's getting things done, uh, and people see that things are getting done, that's, in my humble experience, the most effective thing you can do. And that's why, you know, I'm proud, for example, uh, in my first assignment, uh, you know, I worked in a town that changed its mayor and council. No mayor had ever served two consecutive terms. And uh, when I got there, we wound up turning that town completely around to the point that the mayor served for 20 years, five consecutive terms. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason is results. People saw that we were getting things done. So that's- Yeah, that's I know, but the, the, but, the, but, but the problem here in Red Bank, we've had no, a mayor, no. we've have a mayor here who's been there for 30 years. Yeah. But, and just years. let me finish. The second part of that is, uh, I'm not sure I can tell you exactly what the recipe for success is. But one thing I can tell you for sure is that a guaranteed recipe for failure is to try to please everybody. So if the loudest voices are the ones on a certain website mm. and your elected officials are intimidated by that or trying to please those voices where those voices might not really represent mm -hmm. the majority of the community. And this is, you know, this is difficult terrain to navigate. I recognize that. Uh, but that's going to be a recipe for failure. The, on the plus side, though, to your point, the flip side of social media is that it's easy nowadays to communicate with the community, to get information out there, to keep the public informed. And, uh, you know, I, I always say, at least in my line of work, 90% of the job is communications. You know, communicating with your citizenry, with the community, with your elected officials, and keeping to the point was, you know, one of the one of my favorite things is probably a lot of fit, elected officials are sick of hearing me say it, but uh, that their goal should be to uh, strive for respect, not for popularity. But as my wife can tell you, I've told her many times over the years. You can be the most popular guy or gal in town on Monday, and on Friday, they want to tar and feather you. It's that popularity is a roller coaster ride. But if you can, you know, earn the respect of the majority of your citizens, you know what? <clears throat> They're going to vote for you and support you, even if they disagree with things that you do. So, uh, hey. Now you got me on my soapbox with the philosophy of government, not the so, forms of government. Well, this is what I think. I think that's why it's important to have a strategic vision or a five-year plan that can be followed through. And I think that's essential. And um, uh, at this point, what I'm gonna do is segue to Ben because he had his hand up and then to Mark because they both have questions. So I'm just gonna let them speak. Ben, hey. you're on. Um, thank you very much for your coming here tonight. I really, um, I'm enjoying listening. I guess I'm, I truly am a municipal nerd, sorry to say. Thank you. Um, but elected mayor, you kind of mentioned that and went by it um, versus, you know, I guess uh, the body choosing a mayor among themselves. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, uh, again, it depends on the form, you know, uh, because that can occur in, in several different forms of government. The, to me, the most important thing that I recommend is that there be a CEO, you know, there be a chief executive man or woman uh, who has those responsibilities. Uh, so it would depend on the form, really. Okay. Um, then the next question I have that you didn't touch on, I don't know if this is something, you, the partisan versus nonpartisan question in local government. Well, obviously, the the ideal that was established, and that's how I wound up going back to uh, Montclair uh, 
at that time, I was the vice president uh, and CFO up at St. Peter's uh, University, but I got recruited back. The reason I went back to Montclair is it was one of only 14 towns in the whole state that had the council manager form of government with nonpartisan elections in May and a, you know, a, a group of uh, people who are really committed to that form of government. So that's the ideal, but there are towns, you know, politics being what it is and human nature being what it is, there are towns that have a uh, council manager or other nonpartisan forms of government, but they eventually morph into everybody knows that, you know, Ben and Joe and Mark are the red candidates and uh, Michael and Catherine and Bonnie are the blue candidates. And so it, it becomes a little bit of a, of a sham. But, uh, and the other thing is voter turnout is usually low in, in the May elections. However, uh, you would hope it's low because people are satisfied, you know? So ideally nonpartisan, uh, if you can pull it off, if the, if the community is committed to it. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's a personal choice also. Now it is, when, it I say, is, when I say it, personal choice, I mean a choice of reflecting, again, the culture of the community. I think we can have nonpartisan elections, though, in November now. I'm pretty sure. Yes. But correct me yes, you can. Yeah. Right. Thank you. The, and that and kind of goes back to uh, I, uh, Michael DuPont's point before. I think it was Michael making the point that you've had a, the same mayor for 20 or 30 years. But again, no clearly defined roles. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the things in the borough form of government. If you go not only in this country, in Europe and many other places and use the word mayor, people think that's the boss, that's the person in charge. But under your form of government, the mayor is not in charge. <laughs> so that, that creates issues also. Again, no clear CEO uh, under the borough form of government, unless it's been established by ordinance. Right, um, Mark? Yeah, thank you, Nancy. Hello again, Mark. I say, good to see you again, Joe. It's been a, it's been a few years. You, you, but, missed, uh, you missed the fray so much that you came back on the commission. <laughs> this is the only thing that drew me back, Joe. Um, this is, opportunity, this is the opportunity to serve that I was I was hoping it would come. So, uh, and I'm I think we're all privileged to have your expertise and insights today. So thank you again for joining us tonight. Um, the report from May 2018 was, you know, very well done. It wasn't that shocking, unfortunately. I think we knew where a lot of the the faults were, but uh, it's so it's so well laid out that it still gives us uh, a good roadmap for what we need to do uh, as far as this commission is, is concerned as well. Um, I had a couple questions though. You, you mentioned the strategic plan. Um, when you were serving in that role and developing those, was that something that was done jointly by the mayor and council with the administrator or manager, or was it something that was delegated simply to the manager? No, very much uh, jointly. You know, again, that's, you know, uh, Montclair for, uh, you know, my first uh, six years or so there was, you know, was uh, functioning on, on all cylinders and uh, mayor and council and uh, myself and department heads, we were all engaged in putting that strategic plan together. One of the other things that, I, that jumps at me, at me from your career is that you you uh, withstood regime changes. You, uh, when there was, even if there were different people elected, you seemed to continue in certain roles, um, you know, that you spoke to continuity. You know, I think it speaks to your skills and uh, talents. And for Red Bank, I think one of the struggles we have is, is attracting good talent. Um, you know, in my estimation, you've, you've said that the council manager form, you know, you need to get a good manager in. Do you think that is a form of government that allows you to uh, attract good talent or better than the borough form of government, or are they is that really not something that's distinguishable? Uh, it's very much so. You know, you know, the most talented people are going to be attracted first to council manager form, second to strong mayor form, and they'll do their homework. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we do a lot of recruitments and, uh, what, and, you know, one of the downsides, again, mentioning social media nowadays uh, and the internet is uh, that people can do all kinds of research. Uh, we just did a recruitment for a town similar to what I said before about uh, Cranford with their uh, mayors. Uh, I'm not going to name this town, though, but this town in, in 12 years had 10 different business administrator appointments. Well, you should have seen how hard it was for us to try to recruit somebody there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, people do their homework nowadays, you know, especially the most talented people. And uh, it definitely impacts uh, the caliber of people you'll get with, of course, salary being another issue. You know, salaries are really growing. I don't know where you're at now in Red Bank. And, you know, Red Bank has uh, a lot of things going for it that other municipalities the size of Red Bank don't have. If I recall, I think... Uh, you know, I looked before quickly at our report, and that was one of the points we made. I remember when I went there, first went there, I would refer to Red Bank as a city. And some people got really upset with me. You know, what do you mean city? We're not a city. We're a small town. Uh, so that's why, <coughs> excuse me, I made a point in the, in the report of saying whether you call Red Bank a small city or a small town, it has all the ca urban characteristics of a city. Uh, yeah. uh, and not just negatively, positively, you know, having a train station and a hospital and an art center and a very vibrant community and uh, nightlife and so on. So, uh, and all, and also problems of a city, you know, parking and congestion and so on and so forth. So, but I, I learned who I could use the word city in front of and who I had to call it a town. <laughs> That debate is still not settled, so uh, we'll, we'll, we won't weigh in right now. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, it no, is what I, it is, whatever you call it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I appreciate your, your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. I think my wife's calling me for dinner. Okay, well, thank you thank so you much. You guys I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm, very, I'm very informative. It. Thank you for the wise yes. words. Yeah. And uh, if I can locate, uh, you know, a, a study done by maybe Montclair's, I think it's so old, though, it's not a digital document. I'll see if I can find a paper copy. But uh, and Michael, I'm sure, can contact the state and, and knows around a little bit. That, that might help you a lot. I, I don't know if they're all good ones, but some. Oh, you know, who else could be helpful on that is uh, Rutgers. The Center for Government Services, they might have uh, copies of some. Yes. All righty, everybody. Great. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, oh, that was very informative, and we certainly learned a lot. Um, I personally appreciated his insight, and I think everyone else did too. Um, at this point in the agenda, we have the updates from the Charter Commission attorney. That would be you, Collins. Hey there. Uh, yeah. Good evening, everyone. Tough act uh, to follow with Joe being so informative. Um, I just have a couple of brief items for um, the commissioners. Uh, first, um, the next scheduled meeting that you adopted tonight is going to be on Tuesday, the 18th of this month. And um, in consultation with the chair and vice chair, I um, secured um, Mr. Edward Sastelli to attend that meeting. Um, he's a representative from uh, the State Department of Community Affairs Division of Global Government Services. Um, he had previously put together some research documents um, in response to the fact that Red Bank established a charter study commission. I believe that uh, Chair Blackwood forwarded those to all the commissioners, so you may want to uh, take a look at those prior to our next meeting. Um, I believe Mr. Sestelli will be, you know, in a position to speak to um, a review he conducted of Red Bank's current administrative code, um, as well as, um, you know, beginning a, a discussion of that form of government or the current borough form of government as compared to the other options that are out there. Um, and he may be a resource for that meeting and for future meetings if the commission wants to bring him back. 
um, as the different forms of government are more closely examined later on in the process. And then secondly, um, I know that at the last meeting, uh, we chatted about um, interviews with current um, municipal employees. I just wanna let the commissioners know that um, the chair and vice chair um, and I have reached out to uh, the borough and we're working on setting up a meeting with the business administrator next week um, to have a conversation about um, you know, what, what would be feasible um, to the extent we could have individuals that um, the commission would like to hear from that are looking to speak or willing to speak. You know, we would certainly facilitate that at an open meeting. Um, another option that's been discussed is if there's any sensitive issues or it wouldn't be feasible to have it at, a, at an open meeting to perhaps have a subcommittee where two commissioners would meet with that individual and could you know, prepare notes of the interaction and report those out at a, at a future full commission meeting. So those are all uh, different considerations that we'll discuss with the acting business administrator uh, in all likelihood next week. So those were the uh, two updates that I wanted to provide and I'm certainly happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, Thank you. At this point, we have the assignment of work and next meeting actions. Michael, um, sorry, Mike Collins basically covered it. So you have it, be prepared with you know questions for Mr. Sestelli, read the documents that he shared with us. And I think that would be helpful. And then um, the next item is commissioner member remarks. So, yeah, I, I just want to comment, Chair, that uh, I thought this was a great meeting. It, it was the first time I'd have had the opportunity to meet or speak with uh, Mr. Hartnett, and uh, I want to thank Mark for voting for this uh, report. It was very informative. It, it educated me, to be quite honest with you. I hope I, 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 I asked questions that weren't boring and certainly didn't, did, I don't want to monopolize the time, but uh, just uh, as a resident and former elected official, I was truly... Um, appreciative that uh, Mr. Hartnett came and uh, it's clear that he's got years of experience and it was the first time I've, I recognized or even knew that he had served as a borough administrator, uh, not only under all the forms of government, but even in ours. So he knows firsthand the difficulty of running this town. So uh, I was I was very appreciative. Thank you. Yeah, I found that very helpful too. <clears throat> Anyone else? I really liked his uh, comments on it's more important to have respect than it is to be popular in his view of uh, government. That was kind of interesting. And the, the other quote that stayed with me was the respect of government. And um, no, there was one other, uh, I'll have to look at my notes, but uh, oh, this impact of social media, you know, mm -hmm. how profound that is on all of us. <clears throat> right. Yeah. I, I think you had a great point, Ben. I mean, you know, I think the number one mantra on everyone who sits on this table or this chair, we have to remember to be kind, right? Even when tomatoes are being thrown out of our houses, you still have to walk out and say, hey, you know what? Um, and I've learned that over time through winning and losing. And I think that's something that I hope our report, um, you know, covers. Hey, listen, we, we live in this town as one. It's our town. So maybe we can be a little more kinder. Yeah, for me, I, I was obviously, I, I got to work with Joe when, you know, GSG um, was brought in by Red Bank to prepare this report and do an evaluation. Um, I got to know him fairly well at that time. And, you know, his, his knowledge and expertise in this field is, is unmatched. Um, you know, I really do respect the fact that he took the time again to come and, and share his thoughts with us, and uh, I hope it really guides our, our conversation and our on our thought process as we delve into some of the other forms and, and really start getting into uh, some of the other um, opportunities that this commission can can bring to the table. So, uh, just again, appreciate his time, and and we, I thought we generally as a group asked excellent questions, got into some of the specifics, and I also like that Joe's not afraid to be put on the spot and he'll give you a, a real answer. So. Um, it was, it was refreshing to hear his thoughts again. Yes, I agree. Kate, do you have anything to share? No, I just, I just um, you know, from a note standpoint, I'm really interested in some of the empirical things and I understand that it's hard to, you know, dial in uh, to, to what those things are, right? Like I'm kind of looking for um, that, that position of me measurement, I suppose. Um, 
uh, so I'll, I'll probably be contacting you uh, as chair Nancy with a set of questions that uh, uh, you know that I have for the larger group down the line. Okay, that's that sounds great. Yeah, that's the same thing that resonated with me was, you know, the data points. How do you measure how well a government is doing? And you need to have a strategic <clears throat> plan put in place, and as well as clearly defined roles. I mean, that really resonated. Um, I don't have experience on council, but just from my experience with the Environmental Commission and talking to people within the borough, um, mostly doing sustainable Jersey updates. So, you know, I had a chance to talk to people in various departments. You know, there, we have a lot of talented, knowledgeable people working in our borough, and that really works well. But it might help to have the clearly defined roles if that would make them feel more comfortable with, you know, doing their job the best that they can. So I liked, I did like that aspect. Um, Collins, anything? Sort of like part of us, but not part of us, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, all good comments. I'm certainly glad that uh, Joe was good enough to attend on relatively short notice as well. Yeah, I was really grateful for that. Okay, so now we're moving over into the <laughs> public comment section and um, I don't know how to do this. I don't know if um, There's, there are no hands raised for public comment. Oh, there are no hands. Okay, no. that's great. Uh, so at this point, um, can we make a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make that motion, Chair. Okay. Anyone second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Well, and thank you all for coming, and we'll see you in two weeks. You good? Happy New Year. Good night. Good night. Good night now. Bye. Bye. Bye.